This is episode 145 of the Double Cross Anime Podcast. I'm Wooper, and here's Mario. Hello, everyone. I'm Mario. We're finished with the year 2021. It's in the rearview mirror. We even managed to publish uh, our conversation, our list of our favorite anime of that year. But that's in the past. I'm going to forget about that now because the winter season is underway. Uh, almost everything has had at least one episode air. Ryman's Club um, won't get its start for another week, I think. And then the Orbital Children pops on a Netflix at the end of January. But everything else has had at least one episode come out in some cases, too. So we're here to talk about 10 of those shows. And I got to be honest, this is looking like maybe the weakest crop of 10 series that we've ever selected um, for one of these episodes. And we've been doing this for four years now. Yeah, I agree on that sentiment. Yeah, it's, it's bad. I mean, it was even worse before when we had Barao no Soretsu, um, Requiem of the Rose King on the list. And that, that just turned out to be so terrible so, and like... Uh, it's so haphazardly directed that uh, we were like, yeah, let's get this out of here. And we replaced it with something. I don't even remember what the replacement uh, was, but it has to be better than that. Tokyo 34. All oh, right. What? Yeah. That's the yeah, one. I would say that that show is better than Requiem of the Rose King or 4 yeah. or whatever. Uh, yeah. The, the issue I have with many of these show this season airing so far is that I just feel indifferent in most, in the most of them. So that make the ranking a bit hard. Like for the first <laughs> time, I feel the, uh, my my ranking on the show is it, hard because it's it just it it can be interchangeable. Hmm. I mean, I I do agree that the fact that most of them are, you know, if you're kind of viewing it as like a bell curve, um, anime in general, most of them are on the lower end of that bell curve. But yep. I I do think that the worst shows here or the worst show I should say is clearly the worst. And I don't think we're going to agree about, we're not going to agree on what that is, but I do think that there's a clear worst and a clear best. <clears throat> so yeah, we might agree on the, on, on the best one. No, I don't, uh, we won't. Who knows? <laughs> I already, I already All right. <laughs> Investing. All right. So we can, we can start on that first. I, I think this might be the, uh, uh, the season where our preference might be different so mm -hmm. i think it's good yeah we'll see what comes out of this discussion i think it's yep. going to be it's going to be interesting <laughs> i can already right. kind of predict where it's going to go but uh what's the first show what are we how are we kicking it off all right we're kicking off with akebi chan no silo fuku uh, with the english title akebi silo uniform right so this is like, uh, I guess, kind of a cute curls doing cute things sort of yeah. show. It doesn't have like a specific niche activity that they all engage in, like camping or fishing or anything. Yeah. But uh, I guess more loosely, it's just a cute girls show. Yep. Just CG. Yeah. CG as well, yes. Um, I like the I like the act. I like the backgrounds. I. Um. Like I I I read I read the uh the the source manga before you know like before watching this, so oh, this okay. is basic yeah this is basically I I just first a few first few chapters for for the preview. Oh right right. So yeah so so this episode uh, like play out exactly like how 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 it, how it went in um, uh in the manga, and um I say like it. I I have a an a, a okay time with that. Like I I I enjoy the atmosphere. Yeah. Um, the girls though, like uh, the the way that she worry about you know like when whether or not she wearing that sailor uniform to the school, uh, it's a bit too dramatic. <laughs> <laughs> For my taste. Yeah. I I thought. Well, go ahead. Go ahead. Yeah, and um. Like overall, I I thought like the uh, the, uh this uh first episode twenty five is safe for some you know like leering. Some what? Leering like um uh, like the you know like uh, when when she get chains like the cam camera just keep you know like staying there. Yeah. So it is a yeah it's a bit you know like uh male guys in there. Ah, uh, there it is. There it is. I oh, knew right. it. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, yeah, I, I, I have a sense. Like, um, other complain about it a lot. Uh, it, 
I I don't I don't really put out by by that for now, but I I, I can still see that. Yeah. I was, you know, I figured you were gonna say male gaze at a certain <laughs> point. Yeah. A lot of people, you know, a lot of people seem to be uncomfortable with the, like the direction of the show. Yeah. By the way, what uh, you know, since since you feel you kind of feel that male gaze, if you had to guess, would you say that the director is a man or a woman? I uh, if I have a guess, I would say I actually uh where the main guy in in, in was on that. You know, like it keep uh it it have like many party shot. It have like you know like keep, uh have have having a panels of uh of, of the girl changing change, changing clothes. So I actually look it up to see if the mega car is is a male. He is. <laughs> yeah. So what about it's the director of the anime after this first so episode? So I, yeah. So I I actually you know like it I I think it's more of like uh, the man the manga tour instead uh instead of the anime. So I I actually don't. I'm looking up to see if the director is uh, uh, male or female. I I think he's uh, I th- I think it's a female. How about the uh, not sure though. the episode director for this first episode? What, what would you think, man right. or woman? If you had what to guess. do I think? Yeah. If I have to guess, I, I I would say like all of these uh like like the the staff here in the show is uh female centric. If I remember correctly. So I would I I, yeah. I would say that my best guess is women. So they yeah, are women. They are. Yeah. The director right. is Miyuki Kodoki. The episode director for this premiere is Haruka Suzuki. And the writer, the series composer, is uh Reno Yamazaki. So they're all like the the yep. main staff for this series are are women. And yet everyone is like freaking out about how every you know the main character is so Mel sexualized Gaze. and yeah yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> that's what that's what happens when it? people with western uh you know western upbringings i guess i should say are like they watch they watch anime and they're like oh no <laughs> what am i gonna do this this show is tainting my chastity <laughs> how how do you feel personally that was pretty good Mm-hmm. Um, I mean, yeah, the the camera is all over her at all times. She is the one and and only central character at least so far. Um, and her uniform is like of particular importance. You said that was pretty dramatic, and I, you know, I agree. Just thinking broadly, um, it's <laughs> it's pretty dramatic that someone would be obsessing about what they're going to wear to um, yep. their first day of middle school rather than the day itself or the experience of going to middle school itself. Yeah, um, yeah, yeah. But she is somebody who thinks a lot about um, clothing, I guess. And she really, like her, her idol is an idol. She's got a poster up in her room. And one of the first lines of dialogue in this episode is that she wants to be like a particular idol. So she's yeah. probably into, uh, I don't know, fashion and, um, I don't know, beauty. Yeah. Those sort of, that those sorts of interests are not uncommon to girls of that age or people of that age or people in general, you know. Mm-hmm. Um, so, I think it's I think it's reasonable, like the approach that the show takes to the episode, and it's not just about like how uh, cute this this uh, underage girl is. The show does make a a little bit of a you know a show, I guess. The show makes mm-hmm. a bit of a show of it. Um, but I don't know. I, it fell within my expectations, I guess. It didn't it didn't send me like screaming for the hills into zero percent territory. Um, one question that I do have mm-hmm. about Akabi's character in particular, she says to Erica, the the girl who's you know the the actual most uh perverted part of this episode, I thought was when Erica sniffs her her toenail clipper. Yeah. That was really weird. That was like super fetishistic. Um, all the stuff having to do with the uh, Akabi's like sailor uniform. Uh, yeah, I mean, there's obviously some fetishism there as well. Right. But the sniffing of the of the toenail clippers, that was strange. I I actually think I actually if I can recall correctly, 
uh, it differ a bit from the uh, from the manga because I remember in the manga that uh, the girl she snipping her her old toe, toe instead of the the clipper, and that make it even weirder. <laughs> Is it? Does she sniff her feet, or does she clip her toenails and then sniff the toenail clippings directly? Yeah, so she uh, she she clipping her toenails and then she snipping her toe up afterwards. Okay, that's what I remember from the manga. <laughs> that's very strange. Yeah, um, and yeah, and and she know that's strange. I think that the whole point is that you know, like uh, she know that's that that weird and. Uh, and and our manga Akebi uh didn't uh didn't feel it weird. She so she can relate to that. So that's she why can relate want. to that. <laughs> 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 Imagine walking in on someone sniffing their toe or their toenail clippers, either one, and being like, "Oh yeah, this is I I relate to this. This is, this is normal. <laughs> no, no, this, this is something different, but you know, <laughs> I can relate to that." Uh, what what was I saying before? Oh yeah. Um. So one thing that I'm wondering about Akabi's character is she says to Erica, the the toenail sniffer girl, at one <laughs> at one point when they're getting to know each other at the beginning of the day before everyone else comes into school, she says, "I've never really talked to someone my own age before." Yeah. So I'm wondering what that means. Like, was she very sick as a child and she was hospitalized for long periods of time? Or did yeah. she live somewhere that was like completely remote, and she only had her family for company, and she was homeschooled? Or what is the deal with that? Yeah, um, I, I I recall that uh, what she said as well. And on top of my head, I think because she she lived in a rural uh, village, where I think uh, there um, there was mentioned that uh, she was the only one at school. So it was like a non non biori kind of situation. It. Uh yeah, that's that's what I think. Okay. But uh, it's kind of weird. Uh, it's it's kind of you know like a bit <laughs> extreme as well. I guess. I mean, I don't think that's that strange. It's certainly not a common uh, experience, but just you know somebody living out in the boonies and not really having had anyone to play with who's their own age or talk to or um, befriend. Uh, yeah. I you know I think that's I think that's kind of interesting. And in fact, I. I do think that the show has has some promise um, yep. because there there haven't been a lot of good um, like school series recently in anime. Mm -hmm. You know how when people talked about anime, they used to do it kind of dismissively and say that, oh, yeah, every series is set in high school. Mm -hmm. um, but we haven't had a lot of good school centric series recently, yep. at least yep. not in, in my opinion. We, we haven't. Um, yep. So. I I hope that this show can change that trend. I mean, maybe it's going to just get more and more uh, fetishistic as time goes on. And even I will start to be like, whoa, pump the brakes a little bit. <laughs> and then I'll <laughs> fall off of it. But uh, for now, I, I think that, you know, this, this show might be one of the only bright spots of the season. Huh. Interesting. I, I, I actually feel that now that I'm thinking back, uh, I'm thinking back like the first half of the show where it's still you know like when the girl are still in you know like her 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 rural home was were pretty good like at first we see her you know like just jump, jumping around <laughs> and um, right she's on that dirt know, path walking home and she's doing like gymnastics and stuff and it, yeah. it look it just looks awesome yep and uh and, and she talks to like all of her, uh, of her neighbors and you know like when when she see her mom they they just go to to buy the uh the the equipment for the fabric, you know, like the fabric to to make her uniform. So it 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 it's really you know like naturalistic. Mm hmm. And yeah, it's a slice yeah. of life sort of thing. Yeah, that's right. I actually uh, you know, like uh, for this season though, for the slice of life of, of this season, I actually prefer slow loop ah. rather than this. But yeah. well, when when I watch slow, I mean, really. Slow yep. loop is so boring to look at. It, yeah, this show is really slow. pretty. <laughs> yep. I, uh, I, I, I feel more about the characters in slow, slow loop than, than this show so far. Yeah. All right. And um, I, I, I'm, I'm a bit worried about it direction as well because I, I just don't see, uh, you know, like the formula. It just, 
is it just you know like are they interaction at the school I don't know. That's the thing. Um, yeah. may, it might even be to the show's benefit, at least from my point of view, that it hasn't really defined itself yet. It really is just kind of following this girl ar- about in her in her life. Um, yeah, I have to imagine that it'll be school based because like she comes in, she wants to make a bunch of friends. Um, she meets this girl. They get to talking. The series, the or the first episode ends as another girl walks into the classroom. Like, oh, things are finally getting started now that more of my you know, potential um, friends and like peers are coming through the door. So that has to be, that kind of indicates that the show is promising that that's going to be the main thing. Um, and I, th- I think that could be good. I, right. I don't know if it will be. I mean, it's the first episode, but yep. hopefully so there's think, something here. Yeah. So I think you put that uh, rather highly on your, on, the, on, on your list. Yeah. Second. Um, I, I put it seven. All right. I was assuming that you would put it 10th. Nah, nah, Just nah, being nah, nah, weirded nah. out by uh nah, I I I read the, the focus manga. On, I, okay. If 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 you read like the first few chapters chapters of the manga it was <laughs> <laughs> like yeah. you you can you can see the uh the the, the male grace so off so apparent there. But like uh on the part on the uh, department of of the show so far it, it's it's pretty spot on. Okay. Cool. All right. Next, we have uh, Fuso Boys. About Fuso. Have Have you ever, you know, like watch any Fuso or you know, like know about the rules of Fuso? Uh, no, I haven't. And in fact, I I thought it was pronounced Fuso. <laughs> all right. Because <laughs> of all the exclamation points, you know. Yeah. Oh, they have like <laughs> how, how many five? Yeah, something like that. Yeah. Is it exactly five? It is exactly five. For, okay. I, I think for for five members. All, oh, are all, there five people on a futsal team, or like uh, you know, at a time on the field? I'm thinking of six, but don't no, quote me on that. I, I'm I'm not familiar with futsal at all. Well, if it is six and they only put five exclamation points, then uh, I'm gonna have to get them on the phone and and complain about this. This is this simply will not do. Yeah. 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 <laughs> So this I, is I one did. that you were kind of excited about um, before yep. the season started, and I saw that that was the case, and I was just I just kind of didn't say anything about it because I was like, <laughs> "What are you doing?" <laughs> well, um, I I like a good sports show for one thing. Original yep. sports show is kind of uh, hit and miss, but I'm I'm always looking forward to that. And you know, like the the subject matter is food, so which um I I. I kind of have interest about that, so yeah, naturally, um, I would be excited for that. Yeah, but you got to look at the staff. Yeah, yeah. And on this show, that uh, that would be no one. That would be okay, according no to my anime list. It that I they they just list like the team song performance. Well, Team my anime list is not not really the place to go to look up staff information in general. Yeah. You, you want like Annie DB uh, for that, but nobody who is working on this show has worked on anything noteworthy. Except, I off the top of my head, I think the series composer has has written some decent some decent stuff, maybe. Yeah. But just in general, like there's nothing nothing to see uh, here, you know, as the as the saying goes. But. That being said, I didn't think this was terrible. I mean, there were aspects of it that were just terrible. But mm-hmm. on the whole, I don't think it was as it like it wasn't as bad as I was expecting it to be. Uh, you expect it was. Oh yeah. I I I, I did say that it um like story wise it did uh you know like ticks some boxes, like it in introduced uh what what the appeal of Fuso is it it did um. Introduce a bit of the uh, Fus- Fuso uh, rules, so we know it's like a five 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 or six six. <laughs> <laughs> uh, five five people playing um, like soccer on the basically. Court. Yeah, it's just basically soccer. Just yeah, <laughs> and um, what else? We they actually introduce uh, some of the main characters. Uh, I I think in fact that they all already successfully introduced all these uh the main six uh that that's gonna be in one team. 
Okay. Uh, it, it's come a bit convenience that you know like they already uh they know right round it up this, uh like this must uh talent in the first episodes, but you know like. If 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 it just for like ten eleven episodes, I I don't I don't really mind that they do this, uh. So so that's that all the good thing that I can think of 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 on the show so far. Arranging all the characters conveniently so they can all be introduced right away is is yeah. a positive. It is a positive. So 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 we know what what the show go going for. You know, right right about. Uh, you got your metaphors mixed up. That's baseball. <laughs> no what, that's that's not a positive man that's all right i mean think about the way that this show starts it's like there's bullies how many how many oh, shows God, out just yeah. out of these 10 that we picked started off with bullies and then like uh, one of the main characters like the cool main character comes in and is like hey don't stop bullying that that younger and weaker character we're the main characters here and we look good by contrast Bullying All right. is bad. There is a lot, and actually, how should my ranking was that as well at first? Oh yeah, uh, uh not ex- not exactly. Yeah, not I exactly. mean, Boji is taunted by like the children in the town, but it's not as though the main character then swoops in and and saves him from the bullies. He just ha- Boji has to take it basically. Um, it's not it's not the same dynamic like in Futsal Boys and in Tribe Nine, which we'll talk about later. Yeah. Um, there are just like the show opens with bullies who are you know picking on picking on a like a wimpy weak type of character, and then the cool guy who we're supposed to love comes in and is like, "You you can't do that because I'm stronger than you. Let's fight." Yeah. You it's really really show. really really dumb writing. Yeah, really you dumb. Miss- Yep, you missed one other show, Sasaki to me, you know. Really? Started with that as well. Like Huh. Right right the very first scenes. I don't really I don't really remember that. Yeah. I mean we, I can kinda of believe it because Miano is kinda of like I don't know, short. Yeah. No, no. <laughs> yeah. No, we, it we, that's it's not the same it's not it's not really the same. Like We'll talk about that later. <laughs> yeah, I I remember now what you're what you're talking about. That's yeah. I I guess there's just a bullying problem in Japan. We've been talking about this for a while, huh? Yeah, yeah. Right. <laughs> uh, I, what did you think of the animation I, of the show? It it's it's not good. <laughs> <laughs> like, uh, it's the first episode they su- they supposed to you know like showcase what you know like what they cut cut people off, and so what they cut people off instead is just you know like a a bunch of slideshows. And it's it's not a good first impression for me. It, in general, I would say, yeah, it wasn't great. In fact, like during wide shots when a character was kind of running across the screen, it mm-hmm. didn't like it. It was some of the worst running animation I've seen in a while. Like it just looked like they were kind of puppets whose legs were were being, like, kind of flopped back and forth as though they were marionettes. Like all their limbs had strings attached. Um, it it those were really bad, but there were a handful of like really good cuts. Whenever you know there are super moves in this show, like Inazuma Eleven, uh, mm-hmm. like one character does Dragon Head Shoot, um, where he like kicks the ball way up into the air and then jumps up like impossibly high, enough yep. like high enough to jump over a building, and then he like kind of flips around in midair and kicks the ball, and it, there's like a little dragon animation uh, as he scores a goal. But that that particular scene, like there's a character, Ryu, I think, the guy with the silver hair, he does it twice. And the, both of those look like really good. Yep. Uh, yep. And everything else just looks bad. <laughs> I, I agree with you on that. And they, they kind of tone up the, uh, the, the issue with the team as well. So usually we, we, we can see that uh, one of the characters, you know, like uh, is, is selfish. So he just doesn't uh, pass the ball. They do it multiple times here, to the point that you know, like it's just keep uh re- repeated. Like I was like, oh my god, get on with it, you know, like deal with it. Yeah, I kind of so, remember that. Yeah, I mean, uh, the only thing that I really remember is the dragon head shoot though. <laughs> move. That's pretty much it. <laughs> 
Yeah, that, that was and the cool. bullies. Yeah, but yeah, it was it was pretty repetitive. I mean, I because they butted heads with those bully characters like multiple times over the course of this episode. Yep. Um, and all the other characters were like, I don't know, they yeah. just weren't very exciting. They they might as well have had like those little cardboard stands that they put at the end of aisles in grocery stores. They could have put some of those <laughs> in there instead of the actual people. And yeah. the result would have been like roughly the same, I think. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But so it wasn't I, absolutely terrible like some of the other shows. <laughs> wow! So so it's still like in the middle of the park for you. A seventh. I put it eight. Hot damn! <laughs> <laughs> I'm the real well, futsal fan here. Excuse me, futsal <laughs> fan. <laughs> I, I actually gonna watch uh, some more episode of Fusolo to see how, how it goes, but yeah. Oh, I'm not. I'm never watching this again. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, I, I don't blame you on that. Alright, the next one that we, we have is Hakuzume. One of the Police very first show that I watch. Yep. Yeah, it was one of the first to come out. Yep. Okay, you first. <laughs> What first? Feel, but, yep. Um I thought the show was really lame. Yeah. I thought the the jokes were spaced way too far apart um for me to ever like laugh at them. There was no comedic rhythm really cuz yeah. none of the conversations between characters last long enough uh for 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 them to like kind of get into sync with each other. Mm-hmm. Um and and most of the humor just stems from the main character's perception of something as being like weird or undesirable mm-hmm. like oh that's weird or oh i don't like that or oh this job sucks like that's the humor uh, of the show and it's, it's not really funny at least I, I don't find it to be funny i also thought the voice acting was amateurish and the animation mm-hmm. was really stiff even though the designs like they clearly like wanted the designs to say consistent across every single frame um, because they were they were like super duper um, cleaned up and mm. like really kind of shiny looking, you know. Mm-hmm. But as a result, they kind of don't feel as though they fit into the environment. Like they kind of just hover above the backgrounds as though they're out of place. Um, so pretty much strikes th- like three strikes and this show is out for me. Another yeah. baseball metaphor. <laughs> um, I actually feel a bit a bit sad about this because uh, like the main concept of it, I really like it. It's about uh two you know like police women, which we don't really see uh very often, and uh in in a workplace where you know like they, uh yeah we we kind of see like how 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 they running everyday uh life at work, um. There, there was a bit of the uh, chemistry between them where they bashing off each other, but I agree with you that the, uh, uh, the, the comedy like the comic timing it was just off. It, it wasn't funny at all. I think the, the only, uh, I think um, I feel that they, they know the inside of you know like what uh what the police woman was like, like and you know like like what you said like there is uh the expectation like the uh the less of people see about them and you know like they're real you know like what what they what they thinking themselves like i i i i i think the show that i enjoy the most is when you know like everyone just keep uh telling them like you know like you you ripping off they they had they they really hate the uh the police the policeman was and that a joke they, and and yeah yeah that the the cruelty of, of it i really like it but uh, when they try to make sure out of it, it 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 just it just off. Yeah, yeah. So, I I kind of enjoy the uh the, also the plot where you know like uh the uh, uh Fuji, uh. I don't remember any of the characters' names. All right, the uh, just the, the uh, new the new one or the new the, one, the experienced yeah. one. Oh, the experienced one, who uh, who Ponytail. cough, yeah, who who cough, uh, who who catch one of the uh, one of the thief and she managed to get uh, the new one, you know, like, 
uh, talking to to him and uh, share uh, experience with with him. Yeah, I, that was I the best concept. The yeah, the I, yeah I, the idea is good. Have you ever heard of a of an American sitcom called Brooklyn Nine Nine? I heard of that. I have never seen it. I think I I seen some part of that on the TV, but I don't know any other characters. Okay, that's that's the kind of like joke idea that Brooklyn Nine Nine would pull off really well. Mm-hmm. Uh, like that that exact idea that there's a criminal who the the cops just like sweet talk into getting a bunch of information from him and having him turn himself in and stuff. Um, you know, okay. if you if you have a, a better a better rhythm, which you know can probably be achieved more easily between like two living actors. Um, you know, yeah. then then it's great, but not so in Hakozume. Yeah, that's not pretty cool. Yeah, Brooklyn Nine Nine is pretty fun. Right. It's just like it's just this show, but funny. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, I think the uh the show that I find the worst is when the experienced girl, she she just keeps starting, you know, like all the hateful words to you know like. What was he feeling? Why Why did you find other people calling the cops, uh, you know, like... Pig. Yeah, pigs and grifters and uh, whatever. Why was that funny? But when, when she, like, is muttering under her breath about them, that's not funny. <laughs> uh, they're kind of two sides of the same coin. Uh, I think because, uh, mo- mostly because, like, the other, they just, they just say that right in their face and they have to put up with that. Uh, and and for her, she just like you know, she just keep complaining without you know doing anything. No, it's, it's, yeah, kind of, kind of like that. Okay, so like fuck the police, basically. Yeah, fuck the police. Right, coming and, straight and, from the underground. Yeah, and and they were just like, why why people keep hating us while we're doing our job? You know, like the best of our job. Yeah, I don't get. I don't yeah, find that well, funny at all. Like just the <laughs> show in general, though, I don't, I don't find it to be funny. So yeah, yeah, uh, yeah. And the uh, production, it, it it doesn't look good. I mean, it it's kind of like aggressively, um, I don't know, kind of the same across the board, I guess. Yeah, it's just it looks too clean. It doesn't, you know, it doesn't look like. Uh, there's not much of a personal touch to it. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So that's, I would like to see something where the, the hand of the person who drew it or, uh, you know, directed it or arranged it or painted it, whatever. I would like to see somebody's hand more, more evident in the finished product. But in Hakozume, it just kind of looks like it was not. All right. So uh, I put it 9 of 10. So did I. Maybe we, we have the same show for, for the last part, but let's see. I already know that we don't. Huh. All right. The next one got going to be Kurushiai. Would you say Maybe that these two one? characters have chemistry and that they bounce off each other? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> All right. Um, I, 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 I actually kind of kind of like the premise no 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 (laughs) this is the worst show on this list it is trash (laughs) Uh, i this is one of the worst first episodes i've ever seen really all right i i i can't i kind of like the romance (laughs) uh not um the the two have so far so so it it basically just just of this guy chasing the girl why uh, why she clearly hates him she wants nothing to do with him whatsoever yeah, yeah but she couldn't get rid of him either why and, is and, why is that a selling point <laughs> that just and, means that he's like he right. won't take no for an answer yeah and in this context i think it's worth because they are they are both you know like underground assassins uh so they it is guy it's guy it's part of their job basically to you know like live with the dangers and he is like some spies on top of that so uh no, normally i would i would this 
disapprove of that but you know like in in this situation where you know like these two are assessing they kill it they kill up uh other people for bounty i i think it's work for me it's work nah no <laughs> way like okay yes clearly both of these characters are like morally compromised yeah. um you know but just because they are both pieces of shit doesn't mean that I want to I want to watch a guy like just dog after a girl when she is not interested in him whatsoever. Like okay, let's let's say that he was like really hot uh and she was attracted to him. It was clear that she thought he was like good good looking. Um but he was a complete heel. Then I'm like, "Oh, all right. You know, I I guess I we can watch to see whether her like you know, whether her better judgment wins out or whether whether she's able to like kind of manipulate him and and kind of give as good as she gets, she can kind of like bring herself up onto a level playing field with him so that she can act on her attraction to him uh, without being like at a quote unquote disadvantage. You know, at least th- then there's some tension or, you know, there's something to watch, something to follow along with. The way that the show exists in its current state, there is nothing the guy just will not leave her alone. He's a creep. He, like everyone else in the show, is hideously ugly because the show looks gross. And everyone looks as though they, I don't know, like have a miniature sun in orbit around their head. The lighting is so fucking bad. Uh, not to mention the main character's name is Chateau Dankworth. <laughs> All right. Her name is Chateau Dankworth. <laughs> That sounds like a mansion where you go to smoke weed. That does not sound like a human name. Oh, it's so bad. Well, well, I <clears throat> Chateau, I think, is the good name, right? It's not her real name. I don't know. I mean, I think this show is so unbelievably shallow that the characters probably don't even use code names. It probably <laughs> hasn't thought that far ahead. Wait a minute. All right. These assassins and bounty hunters probably shouldn't use their real name. That's crazy. I wasn't thinking about that. I was just thinking about, uh, you know, how much of a cool guy this guy was because he wouldn't leave this woman alone, even though she wants nothing to do with him. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Uh, you, you, you've you, missed the um, the twist. The twist is that uh, now she decided to kill him. And the well, twist yeah, is because she it, was told he, to by, like, her company has a contract on his head. Yep. And the twist is that he know about that as well. So I think at some point she will try to, you know, like nail him as well. And in what sense of the word nail? Kill. <laughs> <laughs> Not the other one. <laughs> and, and, and maybe it come off the other way. <laughs> maybe. Maybe she'll do both. Uh, not necessarily in in uh, one order or another. Yeah. Well, I, I, I always have a uh, great interest in, in spy, in, in fiction. So, <laughs> and, and it, it is not spy, it, by, uh, by the way. It, it's more uh, assassin, bounty hunters, and, you know, right. what, what not. But <laughs> I'm, I'm kind of into it. All right. Well, uh, that's, that's good. <laughs> Enjoy. Yep. So, you <laughs> click, this is clearly your tent. Oh no! I I put this twentieth. <laughs> I put it fifth. All right. The next one gonna be uh, Oshima Rankings episode thirteen. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I actually feel that uh episode twelve is more eleven or twelve. A more important? No, it's not. It's not important. Like like it it um. Uh, it cracked me more when when uh, we know about uh, more about uh, me channel uh, the me who I think it was episode 11 which had like was it a flashback to Miranjo like as a girl something like it's, that it's not really a flashback it's more of a, a night eye see you know like another side of her we, we don't really know that for sure Oh, is it that Daida you know whenever we see Daida with like his actual consciousness yeah. Um, it's it's kind of like in a in a black, um, kind of like internal mental realm. Yeah. Um, that's where he sees Miranjo, right? Yeah, it 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 kind of like the uh, the other world, the ether. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Well, it's because so, so, his conscious his consciousness has been like sublimated, 
um, because yep. somebody else took over his body and his brain. Um, so wherever he is, is probably in like some little tiny corner of Bose's um, consciousness within his own brain. Yeah. And Miranjo is in there somehow. Yeah. And we learn a little bit about her and that, yeah, that's kind of interesting because we need to know about her. She's like pulling all the strings of the series at this point. Yep. Um, so everything we learn about her is cool. And every episode that goes by when we still don't understand what the hell is going on is, uh, it's not cool. Not, not as cool, yeah. And that's kind of what episode thirteen was. I mean, it was it was a basically a really big prolonged fight scene. Yep. Uh, what's the deal with uh with that uh, masked guy? Oken. Oken, yeah. Yeah, he's the one we saw at the end of episode eleven. We saw a shot of him in his jail cell, like eating a rat or something. That was when somebody came to set him free. Miranjo, I guess, or one of her lackeys. I, I don't recall that flashback at all. Was there that flashback? Oh, it wasn't a flash. Okay. It wasn't a flashback. All oh, right. I don't. I don't maybe I just that. mistakenly said the word flashback. But they're just at the end of episode eleven. Um, someone comes to release him from his cell because that's that's you know, she's in the oh. process of gathering all these um, you know bad guys, yep, robbers and thieves and killers and whatnot, so that they can so that they can destroy this country and i don't understand why she wants to do that yeah see and i don't understand why apias is allied with her and why he doesn't break the alliance when he sees that miranjo plans to kill dorsha and queen hilling in this episode i don't understand any of that yeah i i think it's just uh their motivation is uh still hidden at the moment and we will see more but i <clears throat> on top of my head i think that um um uh, michendo uh have like one maybe uh she have like a personal grudge with uh with healing and second she might you know like uh like she said in i think in this episode that she's she think more of the uh for for uh for the good of uh of, of king what his name Bose. but so why he, he for whatever reason <laughs> see, 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 actually the one who advised uh, healing as the second second queen. Yeah, because she wants Bose to have another child so that he can steal its life force and yep. uh, live forever. We don't understand why that is. Yep. Um, there's a lot uh, that we don't understand, and the show keeps breaking away from the present day in order to show us little flashbacks. Like, um, what's his what's his face? the like the disgraced king or whatever his name was who gets uh his his hands and feet cut by Oken. Oh. yeah 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 all right there was a little flashback <clears throat> to his past where he was talking to his father or something right before yeah. he quote unquote dies but he's yeah. not really dead <laughs> yeah he's not really dead i don't know why he he's still alive after all that but <clears throat> yeah um, yeah remember he that. should just be disposed of like the show we're halfway through the story at this point like you gotta you gotta cut the dead weight uh so we can eventually learn about what's actually happening in the story <laughs> yeah well i i still really enjoy that uh i still like for fps i think for a while that you know that at first he he one of my favorite characters because he uh, he he's he's the only few who supported uh, Boji um, as, as a king, and then he become more like a, a puppet uh, of a uh, of, of of the of the mural. But wh- and why? Why did because, he pledge himself to her? Okay, because of some flashback <laughs> that we saw. <laughs> That um, I I think when he uh he had to do some of the challenges and uh and Mitreno was the one who um, you know like give him the new power, so that he become you know like one of the four knights he is today. He was already oh in the past she was the one who gave him the power. his his current strength. Yeah, yeah, that's what that's what I think because uh, I remember in one of the flashback like he have the you know, um. He had one of the eye um, destroyed, 
and uh, he he was he was like uh, li uh, literally in injured uh, at, at at one point, and then afterwards, like she, I, I think she she did something to him that you know like that uh, so that he had the the new power. Okay. Well, that's yep. good. Glad he's uh, got a reason for allowing her to just like torment and potentially kill Dorsha and Queen Hilling, even though yeah. he decides to not yeah. let her do that, and then is like, "No, I, you can't do this, please." And then she's like, "Okay, I'm cool with that for now." Yeah. The well, she she says this will have to be settled sooner or later, indicating that they have to die but she won't yep. do it now because why because apia Be, said so yeah because she paid respect to apia's that's that's the impressive idea. well what <laughs> i'm not gonna say the w word again <laughs> but come on <laughs> i i would like to i would like to understand this series uh yeah. but i don't there like there are questions for example um Olken goes into the village and like and starts to wreak havoc. I based on the way that he acts in some scenes, I think that he like gains power when people are afraid of him, or something along those lines. Like the the uh, yeah. he like leeches power from people spiritually and and he kind of threatens them or acts imposing in order to in order to make that happen. That's just my best guess right now. Uh, my best guess is that she just take pleasure out of it, out of you know, like uh, when people scare. Oh because well, that's yeah, that's more of have, like uh, sadism hit, type of thing, right? Yeah, we have we have like hit face, you know, like doing uh, these not in expression whenever you know like someone scare. But aren't aren't they wearing the, a mask? Yeah, the the fetish expression we we can oh still just like see, blushing, you know, yeah, blushing, yeah. Okay. Um, so the, the Oken character, just generally, there's, there's a line about how Oken is the one opponent that Boji should never face, um, uh, yeah. because something about Oken's, um, makeup or their, their fighting style or like their physicality makes them that like, they're going to have a huge advantage over Boji, probably because they don't have like a particular weak point physically on their body might just be a suit of armor and nothing else. Yep. Um, that is the sort of question that kind of makes you intrigued about Oken's character, and it kind of makes you look forward to Boji and Oken potentially facing off in the future. That's the kind of question that is like, oh, okay, this is this is a this is a minor mystery that I appreciate uh, not knowing the answer to yet because we may we may get a reward for that down the line. Whereas a lot of the other questions that the show poses about the motivations of its main characters are not that same sort of question rather they are like omissions of information that should in my opinion be given to the audience um, so that we can follow more closely what the characters are feeling and empathize with them more closely as well um, I, I the show I, doesn't really v place a place any sort of value on that experience I don't think hmm. I, I I think I understand your point but I kind of disagree on that I actually feel that uh you know like they are layers of layers of you know like how how the characters you know like uh behave what their motivation are so uh like 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 we said about um uh rps like we we still don't know why that he you know like he 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 tried to, to interfere with uh killing healing and uh and um and Desha, I know it's a Desha, uh, Doshe. Right. But, uh, yeah, but, but, you know, that like part of him still, you know, like consider them as a friend. So, so we see like another layers of him. It might not be, you know, like consistent of, of a whole, but I think it is still, you know, um, peeling, you know, like hit, uh, hit out, outside to see more of, you know, like the, uh, the essence of, 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 of the character, so I'm 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 good with that. All right. And we 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 ask, we're gonna see more of um uh, of of Mir uh, uh when uh she talking to uh, uh Kagi uh, sorry to um uh, to Nida. 
So we we we're gonna see more from her, and I want to see her, you know, like her real motivation out of all this. Well, I'm not even convinced that the show will not, will provide it necessarily because we might start getting flashbacks ab- about like random townspeople. Uh, Town people, right. yeah, like just give us some, yeah. give us some of their flashbacks, like what they went to the fair when they were five years old, and they they won a, a stuffed frog in a carnival game, and and then. Uh, then I don't know. They accidentally bumped into a witch while they were walking to the market to get potatoes for their family, and then she swapped the brain of the the frog doll with the little the little child. Maybe we could get a story about that, and that would maybe we could peel back the the motivations of the townsperson <laughs> and the witch, and that would be yep. that'd be cool. <laughs> oh, okay, potato. Hey, yeah, like uh, Sasha from Attack on Titan. Um. This part, though, like he he actually he know a lot, but uh, I want I I still want to see more from him. Is is episode thirteen the one where we he we saw that he had that big fat horse, or was that yeah. episode twelve? It either one. I would say twelve. I would say twelve. Was it because okay. I I I watched the back to back, so I I so I, did I. Yeah, yeah. Oh my um, god! I mean, that was just. A little a cute little reason for him not to be present in that scene. Obviously, the goal was he can't be here yet because you know just for, just because yeah. Well, for the plot, probably he needed to be somewhere else because if he were there, he might be able to like provide a particular answer about a character, um, yep. and that's supposed to be a mystery still. So he's got to he's got to be late. Yep. But at least we I, see that I, cool I horse. That with, um, at, at this point. For also my ranking, I would I would rather wait for a few more episodes to you know like to to be watch it, so that we can you know like see more of more and more of you know like the uh, the deeper side of the characters or their motivation basically. Because for now it just you know they keep jumping back and forth between characters and town people. <laughs> well, or uh, villains and main yeah. characters like the way that yeah. this band of villains has kind of taken over the show um yeah in the yeah, last yeah. couple of episodes is like i i just don't aren't they all just going to end up dead anyway and why does it matter I, that this guy has is wearing a crown just temporarily and that he beats up apias off screen at the end of episode 13 mm-hmm. uh I, does any of that really matter i mean yeah, I I don't think this guy matters at at all. You know, like they in the next few episodes they're gonna be you know taking out. But yeah, I agree with you. Like these are the weaklings because we don't we don't know about them before. We are just learning some of them. You know, like in the in the process, and uh, do we care about any of them? Of course not. So they just like the uh, the the mid level boss. Uh, at, at best. Yeah. Well, Oaken might be important. Maybe. But maybe even not. even he uh, or she or, or whatever is inside that suit of armor will yep. probably just, I don't know, have another fight with another major character and die. Yeah. Yep. Hopefully right, it's so cool. F- Hopefully it's a cool fight. I mean. Yeah, so for know. this episode alone, episode 13, how would you rank it? Fourth. I rank it first. Yeah. Fourth. Uh, oh, yeah. All right. The next one. I'm, I'm intrigued to see uh, what you think about that, about this one. Uh, mm. Sabi Kui Bisco. Right. Oh, well, it's certainly an ambitious series. Yeah. Uh, lots of cross-cutting between different locations and characters. Uh, and the future where it's set where there's like everything's been rusted people rust like their their bodies outside and internally get yeah. rusted and there's rust all over like buildings and entire stretches of land have been turned into, into deserts and i i really it's, like it, that concept it's just very inventive yep i i really like that concept i it remind me a bit of uh dr stone but you know, like bad, better. I don't. I don't really like Doctor Stone at all. Um, I still can't. I cannot understand about uh the guy who's 
uh, who can make mushroom man eating mushroom because I, I I just feel that really we are out of you know like the context that we just said you mean or you're talking about Bisco the guy yeah, with Bisco. the um, yep. the bow and arrow that yep mm-hmm. yeah it I, that doesn't make any sense to me <laughs> All right, so I'm I'm not the only one who feels lost about that. Well, I mean, I, I don't feel lost. Uh, it just doesn't make any sense because the show hasn't explained it yet. Um, yeah. And I don't know. Who knows? Maybe it never will. I think it, you know, I think it probably will. Uh-huh. It'll sh- it'll show perhaps in more detail like what exactly he fires from his bow in order to make it so that uh, mushrooms burst from the point of impact. Mm-hmm. Um, I don't know. I don't know what the deal is yep. um and it's the it's disappointing that not that we don't understand how his power works but the depiction of it like whenever he fires it fires off an arrow and it hits somewhere the it, we don't get to see the mushrooms like sprout or grow out of the ground it's just the arrow hits whatever he's fired it at and then that's that's one frame the arrow hits and then boom very next frame there's just giant mushrooms there and there there's like a little cloud of um, dust and rubble kind of at the base of the of the mushroom kind of like so it's masking so you can't see um, how exactly it, it grew there and it's like I don't, I don't know for the for the whole for like mushrooms to be so intricately tied to the plot um, because not only are they his weapon of choice but the doctor character also uses them for uh, medicine and yep. they're highly sought after on the black market we see um a like a mushroom hunter guy wearing a mask and a cloak and stuff mm-hmm. um sell some to a guy with a food stall yep and it's like a real hush hush deal you know so mushrooms are are a major part of the show uh mm-hmm. and we don't really get to see them really used in any interesting ways like in terms of animation yep so that kind of sucks. Um, mostly, I just think that it's interesting that this show has created such a, such an innovative, uh, like kind of dystopian future, and that it has it has pretty big ambitions. I think like the way that the show opens with the really slow pans across varying locale locales and uh, the the credits like kind of flashing across the screen, as though this is some like prestige sort of. Uh, drama, you know. But I don't know if the show will live up to that. Yeah. I I I I also agree with you. I really in, get intrigued by the uh by the world building. Uh it it, it makes a believable, you know, uh post apocalyptic world. I just feel that uh the uh the people get crushed part and the mushroom part at the end they don't really uh, mesh well together they, they they feel like two completely different shows so far uh yeah well now the two main characters have met at the end of the first episode yep so it kind of was like two different shows um yep. mm-hmm. but now these two worlds have collided and i think they're probably going to be journeying together from this point forward like if the promotional material is anything to go by so it's interesting to see how it seems from there. I, yeah. So it it intrigued, but you know, like still, still a bit inconsistent for me, at at the moment. Yeah. I will. I'll. I'll watch. You know, another episode of this to see if mm-hmm. the second one is better, because the second one's gonna have to be better, for me to care about it enough to keep going. All right, so what ranking that you put on that? Fifth. I put it second, actually. What? <laughs> I, I enjoy it. I enjoy it. All right. All nice. right. I mean, yeah, I I just am surprised, based on what you said about it, that it was, like, number two. But then again, it's, you know, it's that kind of year so far. Yeah, yeah, true. All right, the next one is the uh, BL, Sasaki and Biano. Right. So this is one where I actually read the first few chapters of the manga because I previewed right. this one. Yeah. Uh, and this was exactly like, I mean, you said Akebi-chan was pretty much like the manga, but then you made some comments saying that it like toned down some of the more fan servicey elements and mm-hmm. stuff. Sasaki and Miano was just literally the manga. 
um, right. on screen. And uh, uh, it was, you know, it was okay. All right. It, I, I think it started off worse for me. You know, like the, uh, the opening scene was really cl- clunky. Really I agree. Bad. We, we referred to that earlier because that was yep. another uh, spot where bullies were involved, like at the very beginning of an anime or manga. Yep. Um, yeah, and it's true that Sasaki does, like Miyano thinks to himself, oh, I got to do something about this, and then Sasaki. To, to me, the reason that this one's a little different in its use of the bully trope is that it's more about Sasaki and Miyano themselves, and the bullying is kind of like remote. It's kind of separated. They don't get involved in a whole thing with the bullies, and then there's like an exchange of trash talk, and then one of the bullies throws a punch, and Sasaki dodges out of the way, and then elbows him in the back, and he goes down, and then we get a shot like from below, uh, kind of emphasizing how tall and and cool and strong Sasaki is, and he's like, "Bring it on!" And then there's a big, you know, you know where I'm going with this. Yeah, uh, it's not so. It's not exactly the same, but yeah, I do agree that the first scene is the worst. Um, yeah. It, you know, because it doesn't really have anything to do with the two of them and their relationship in particular. But the show gets into that eventually as it goes on. I think I kind of appreciate uh, the way it, 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 it does. Like, uh, if, uh, like the, the whole thing, it's just some sort of like recollection. You know, like it, um, uh, it's that out of others. It's just more about, you know, like um, points of them being together. Uh, the issue with that for me is like I don't I don't really see the uh the, the development in there, you know like uh they 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 were stranger at first and they now become more acquainted to each other so I don't see that you know like uh progression, and that feel a bit lacking for me. I didn't I know what you're saying I didn't really mind that it was out of order. Uh, in fact, I wouldn't even use the phrase out of order, I don't think. It's just that there are a few scenes in here that are recollections of either Sasaki or Miyano. They're mostly, I think they're mostly Sasaki's recollections, or Sasaki, I should say, because it's his point of view that we're locked into most of the time. He's the one who's thinking, oh, wow, Miyano is so cute. But, 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 but it's not, you know, he's a guy. It's not like I'm being weird about this or anything. Uh so it's mostly Sasaki who, whose eyes or brain we're viewing this through. Um, and I, I don't know. I didn't really mind that he was re- remembering stuff about, about Miano to catch us up to the present. Because to me, I think that what this show is, is it's just, um, you know, it's another school series. Um, but it's just, what is it going to be? It's going to be about the two of them and just their everyday life hanging out it could be said at a school or it, or it could not be it's just you know the the two of them are yeah talking about well, bl manga and whatever and they yeah and they're gonna miss some other characters as well but uh yeah it brings back to my point because uh Miyano's, uh met like he he know one of uh his senpai who is on the same class with sasaki the blonde haired guy the blonde hair guy and uh, we didn't really you know like he 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 appears suddenly and uh like through some of you know like some of the plot ex- exposition we know that you know like about the about the link and uh i it, it just feel weird to me as well it i yeah i i i, I don't think i i don't see that he have like a proper introduction and I don't think he needs a proper introduction. He's just uh, Miano's friend. Like, yeah. When you watch a TV series, do you expect that every single one of the main character's acquaintances from before the first episode needs to have their own episode? No, like, no, I don't think so. He's no. just he's just one of Miano's friends. That's just who he is, and he he pops in because he's acquainted with both of the main characters. Mm-hmm. Maybe he will have his own episode with flashbacks galore in the future. <laughs> in fact, I very much expect that to be the case. But uh, I don't know. He's he's just a guy who is friends with these two other guys. Yeah. All right. Yeah. But 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 it's he's a dude. I mean, it's that that's so weird. I mean, it's not not like I'm g- 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 gay or anything. <laughs> All right. Um, <laughs> how how do you think about these two characters, and how how do you think about their chemistry? Uh, I think they bounce off of each other. Well. <laughs> well, <laughs> uh, 
I don't know. I think it's annoying that Sasaki is like, you yeah, know, he, he, every time he finds something to admire about Miano, everything, any time that he's like attracted to him, he's like, oh, that, that's so strange. Mm-hmm. That's. I'm sure that that when when gay guys in high school are finding themselves, they probably have very similar thoughts, you know. But uh, I don't know. I'm not really interested in. I would be more interested in a gay romance where, like, you know, one of the main characters is solidly gay and the other one is almost all the way there. Like, I don't... All this wishy-washiness is not... Probably just not yeah. what I'm really looking for. Um, oh, so you, you like a um, a more extreme version? No, it d- definitely not a more extreme version because more extreme uh, in BL in the BL world has to do with, like some shit that I don't want to see um, like, in terms of one of the characters being a little bit too forceful. Uh, yeah. Like, know, like, and, like Kuroshii. Yeah. Except, uh, you know, maybe a little less gross looking. Yeah. yeah. Maybe with some better lighting, mm-hmm. please. <laughs> For the love of anime, God. Uh, yeah. I, I, I don't know. Uh, the, the relationship is okay. It's, it's cute in some spots. I think the dialogue in general is pretty good. But um, not really that interested, I guess. Yeah, I I think they share the love for you know, uh for BL um novels. It's kind of alright, you know. Like it it it's it's not it's not something that I find. Like like even if someone share about their their passion in in book in music in something together, I don't think that uh that. That that could be a, a starting point for the romance, but you know, like it it not it's it's not re- really refreshing or original of that. So that we we want to you know recruit along them. Well, maybe the reason that he's into it is because he thinks he he likes Miano and he just wants to like the same stuff that he does. Yeah, yeah. People yeah, do yeah. that all the time. They like pretend to care about the stupid thing that their crush is into. Well, well, it it it's not necessarily pretend, but it's more like he <laughs> he he kind of like open up to that to the idea, so he kind of you know like check check that out, so yeah yeah it's yeah. Not, well, uh, you're well. I mean you're right. He he actually does. He reads the the BL manga, and he's like, oh wow, this you know I had never I'd never really read something like this before, or saw or seen something like this before, but it's actually pretty cool. Um, yeah, but. So that he that's an actual genuine discovery that he has. But mm. in the real world, if something like this were to play out, Sasaki's motivation would more than likely be he thinks Miano yeah. is is cute, and he's like, oh yeah, wow, this this book that you're reading, where you know yeah. the whole plot is just a thinly veiled excuse for these two hot guys to be mm. together. Yeah, man, this is great stuff. Yeah. Uh, I'm into it. <laughs> yep, 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 yep. I, I want to get closer to him, so I I read that in, you know, like so that we get we have, we will have something in common. Right. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Hey, man, love it. Love is a battlefield, or whatever cliche goes here. Uh, and sometimes, sometimes you got to pretend to care about, um, you know, your partner's really dumb ideas and hobbies. Yeah. Sometimes like that's the way it's got to be. Yeah. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> there you go. We've come full circle. Yeah. Um, how how do you think about the visual of this of the show? Uh, it was better than I thought it was going to be. Um, the the texturing of some of like the the scene where the two of them are in the train on their way to the school. Um, a lot of scenes like that of like um, like classrooms or the insides of a, a train car or an office building or whatever. In anime like look really gross um mm-hmm. but i found that that wasn't the case with with this show i thought that the backgrounds were pretty pretty okay mm-hmm. um and the the shots of the clouds when one character is like staring out of a window you know look pretty nice and just in general i thought it was pretty good looking in terms of the backgrounds the characters um their eyes are too big and it weirds me out <laughs> but i you know i'm not really the target audience for this sort of thing so i'm sure that the kind of people who like BL stuff want their characters to look this way. So, you know, God bless. That's, I'm all right with that. All right. Yeah, I'm, I'm okay with their vision as well. Uh, it, I think I like the uh, the, the soft color, color palette. Yeah. 
a little, yeah. it's a little washed out. Yeah, I think it's appropriate. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. All right, so um, I rank it six out of ten. How about you? Same here. Hmm. We 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 have a lot of so in the same rank. Well, we have two. Yeah. All and right. Futsal boys was futsal boys was almost a match. <laughs> yep. <laughs> the next one is Attack on Titan. Final season pack two. Oh my god. Yeah, the tightening. Uh, yeah. It 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 took me a while. It took me like for the first five minutes in to get back into the story. When did when was the last time you saw um the final season part one episode sixteen? Uh, I would say more than half a year ago. Okay. Yeah, for me it was just literally just days ago. Oh right, right. I rewatched it. Yeah. To catch up. <clears throat> Although I don't think that I'll be watching this this new um, you know, final season part two every single week. Yeah. That's a little bit too much for me. I I have a better time watching the show, I think, when I can just burn through it really fast and, yep. and I agree like enjoy that. all the twists and turns like in rapid succession, you know, like stacked on top of each other. Yeah. Um, because the the longer you have the longer you wait between episodes when you're watching Attack on Titan. Uh, the more time you have to think about how stupid it, re it really is. Yep. Um, so I'm yep. just going to burn through it all at once. Uh, and I think the more Im impatient that you had as well, because well, you wait yeah. for, for you wait for the whole week, and then you know, like the next episode is uh, what Not if that nothing good. happened? You know, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <Not that good. laughs> like uh, that's what I uh, I feel a bit in this episode because it's just like an an attention of. You know that what what we have seen so far it's just uh, some, uh, Titan. Uh, <laughs> Dude, you uh, can't you can't be serious. Fighting that, like, against against each other. Marley invaded Paradise Island, <laughs> with airships. How is that an extension of what we've seen so far? That's the fulfillment of the cliffhanger from the end of last season. This is a huge deal. Like this, this is hundreds of years in the making. Is it all right? Yeah, because they've Marley has never set foot on Paradise Island except the very, very borders where they kick the Titans down into the, you know, yep, yep. inside the like the larger wall out on the shore. <laughs> oh, so, so yeah, the so fact we... that they're invading now is like a massive, earth-shattering type of thing. All right, so we got the real deal now. Well, all no, right. the the actual real deal is going to happen when the rumbling happens. The rumbling. Yeah. Uh, when the, you know, because there's a bunch of colossal titans inside the walls. Yep. Uh, oh right, right, and right. And so Aaron's plan is to like unleash those on the world. Yeah. Um. And Zeke's plan is to like kill the entire Eldian race uh, yep. by coming into contact with Aaron and doing some magic shit that doesn't. You know, it's just the way that the show works, and it's magic, and I don't have to explain anything because it's magic. That sort yep. of thing. <laughs> uh, yeah. So. That's I mean that's what the that's what both of those characters want and then Marley wants to just wipe out all the Eldians because they're evil, the Eldians just want to survive because they don't want to die. So every like in this show, all the all the characters' motivations. There was a time when there was a lot of mystery about what the characters actually wanted. Not unlike Osama ranking, but at this point, almost everything has been cleared up. There's just a yep. handful of things that will come into play later. I think based on manga spoilers. <laughs> um, which I have caught in my travels on the internet. Right. There's still some stuff that's uh, up in the air, but yeah. in general, yeah, it's we're just watching a war play out, and it yeah. you know looks. Th I don't like the designs of the characters, like in contrast to how the show used to look. But yeah. this season sucks uh, so so much that like I actually thought the show was one of the most impressive looking uh, uh. premieres. <laughs> All right. Yep. Yeah, I I I still don't uh, prefer some of the character design of 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 the characters, but um, yeah. Apart from that, yeah, I think Papa <laughs> Papa does an okay job of you know like um uh, uh adapting it like uh, taking over a uh, Wii Studio. It's all right. Yeah, it's all right. I'm so so. I mean, you were the one who suggested that we watch this. This was not anywhere on my list. 
of <laughs> shows to talk about. I thought we were just going to continue to ignore Attack on Titan, and I would have been perfectly okay with that. Yeah, um, well, but you, you put it down, you, <laughs> and I was like, "What? What are we going to talk about?" Yeah, you 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 plan the season for that. Like, I I I I don't actually see like any other uh, good choices to make. I, I actually there there is one more show that you know like could could be on our list. Uh, I'm not sure if you have watched it. Uh, no biscuit. Uh, biscuit doll. Yeah, no, I've biscuit seen that. Doll, yeah, I watched that. Yeah. It was pretty yeah, mad. I, I, I think, man, all right. Yeah. I mean, it was one of the better shows probably of yep. the season, you know, but uh, I don't have any interest in watching any more of it. Right, right, right. Hmm. It's just another one of those shows where a loser guy, uh, you know, is kind of put together by the plot with a, with a super hot Gyaru character. Mm-hmm. With with big boobies and uh, blonde hair and I don't know, I just don't yeah. care. Like, I'm 31 years old. I I don't I don't have time to watch that stuff. Yep, yep. Fair enough. But Attack on Titan, of course, I have time for that. I mean, have you seen the show's my anime list rating? It's crazy. Mm-hmm. Oh, it's, oh my god. Yep, yeah. it's already ranked number 23. Based on the first episodes that just uh, came it's out. the twenty third best anime of all time. <laughs> I mean that proves it, right? Yeah. All right. I think it's I, I think it's pretty good. Uh I thought the episode was pretty good. The like on Yankopon when he came back into the, the jail cell and was like, You guys have gotta you guys have gotta save Eren because he's getting beat up by all the other Titans. Um the scene where he lets the characters out and then Connie, the guy with the really the buzz cut, the short gray hair, yep. like starts to like righteously vent his anger at the way that they've uh, been treated by the, the volunteer army who came from from Marley. Uh-huh. I was like, yeah, damn, that's that's the that's the best performance that Connie's voice actor has given in like 70 something episodes. Um, that was cool. The catch-up session between Gabby and General Magath, like she's finally back with the Marleyans, um, who have been training her for so many years. Um, but she's got all this new information now, and she's gonna, you can see the promise of the fact that she's going to be conflicted by what she's seen here on Paradise Island versus what she's supposed to believe, what she's been indoctrinated to believe, um, living yep. in Marley for so long. So the tension yep. has been set up there really well by this first episode. Um, you know. It's Attack on Titan. You got, you got. Uh, there's war, and yep. uh, there's Titans, and yep. there's moral dilemmas. Some of which are better than others, but I think it'll, you know, it'll be all right. <laughs> it's it's gonna right. be good. <laughs> so let let me guess. You put that first. I did. All right. I put that third. Damn you! You know. This season is some hot garbage when we're both on the Attack on Titan train. <laughs> yep, yep. I know that. All right. We have two more shows to go. Okay. And this one is the... Um, uh, the replacement? The, the replacement. We swapped up with, with one other show. So this one is Tokyo 24Q. Tokyo 20, 24th what? Right. Yeah, uh, another Cloverwork series. They're doing three this season. Jeez. And uh, as much you know, as as much shit as they're catching for that, and for like you know, not arranging their their productions, not spacing out their productions mm-hmm. uh, particularly well, and just taking whatever work comes their way. Like a lot of people are criticizing them for that, and I I think that they're probably um, you know correct to do so. Mm-hmm. Uh, Despite the fact that that's probably a bad practice for the health of their their workers, yep. the three shows that they've come out with this season are three of the better looking ones, and yeah. everybody else is just like literally shitting the bed, uh, and just producing garbage. So I, <laughs> it's like it's hard to look at that situation and be like, man, fuck Cloverworks, because <laughs> is anyone else even trying? Yeah, yeah. Well, I I agree with you on that. Like even um, 
uh, like, like we talk about a- Akibi Chan, like it, the background look gorgeous. The uh, character actually look attractive as well. And the other show is uh, is a uh, biscuit doll. Yeah, yeah, it's look good as well. And this one, even even though that it look a bit more, you know, like shakier, it it still look pretty pretty damn good. Yeah, there's scenes of guys doing like parkour and jumping over buildings and stuff, and it. Not every single cut is uh, is good looking, but some of them really are. Yeah, uh, yeah, meanwhile, yeah. I would say a lot of the a lot of the series that debuted this winter don't even have a single, All right. uh, like I a s- single strong scene. I just name. look it, I just look it up to see uh, what studio animated um, uh, Kurosh, uh, Kurosh Eye and it's Platinum Vision. Ah uh, yes, Platinum oh. Vision. Right. Let no me even. see here. Platinum Vision, Annie DB. Platinum Vision. Oh, wait. It gave me Platinum End. Oops. <laughs> Kuroshi I, Annie DB. We're going to go here. Um, oh, so far, the, 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 the rating is 2.6 out of 10 <laughs> on, on Annie DB. So we're going to look up Platinum Vision. And they have been the animators for... Oh, Kono Oto Tomare, the the show about yep. Koto playing. Yep. Um, and then a bunch of other shit that no one cares about. Uh, Ramune, Kai, uh, BOE, Ramune, which is, I think... Um, what on uh, earth is that? Uh, the, show, the show that aired yes, uh, last year. That... Um, um, Enzo. I think it Enzo number one show. Of that year, of last year. Well, I mean, Enzo has lost his marbles, and I would say that he <laughs> yes. lost his marbles a long time ago. All right. Uh, I mean, mostly he just like bitches about stuff these days, as as far as I'm aware. All right. Um, that's that's so harsh. Uh, really? He put Kai Bioi Ramune as his favorite anime series of 2021. Does it really yeah. sound that harsh? Yeah. <laughs> Well, he 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 still care a lot about about you know anime. He still clock very yeah. regularly. He does. He does do that. Needs a platform to talk about how much everything that he doesn't like is bad. That's a that's an important thing to write about. All right, all right. Back back to uh, Tokyo Twenty Four Q. Yeah, uh, we have a a double lane of uh, premieres, which. Yeah, do do you you do you think it worth it? It worth uh, spending forty minutes to to this guy and the story. Man, the the specific phrasing is it worth it? it? It's difficult to say because I mean, is it even worth it to have watched any <laughs> of these shows? <laughs> yeah, well, uh, I don't know. I mean, I think the show makes decent use of its of its time. The first half is mostly establishing the characters' relationships, the fact that they knew each other in in high school. Um, and even maybe even before that as well, yep. Uh, like because they're childhood friends and and whatnot, and you know, giving us a little bit of information about the town that they live in and the 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 disaster that took place, like the fire, that um, you know has Speaking impact has impacted each of them. Like one of their the victim of the the major victim of the fire one was uh, the blue haired guys. Uh, kind of crush or, or something yep. and th- and then she was also the green haired guy's sister yep. um so we got to know we got to know that about them i guess and then the second half was more action focused yep uh, i think that it was, I think it was, that, all right yeah i think the twist come at right right in the middle so if they they end the first episode right at the twist i i would have worked for you to you know like i really, uh, want to watch more of it what was the twist that they were all given these supernatural powers uh, uh, the by the phone is, call from the yeah. from the dead girl? Yeah, that's right. I don't if know. They, Maybe if they end it right there. Maybe. So, I don't yeah. know. I maybe don't really care. Not for me. Yeah, maybe not for me. So I I think they do a good job because I, after forty minutes, I I I I want to watch more of this to see how it goes. Yeah. 
Yep. So yeah, how how do you, how do you like the characters so far? Man, I don't know. I can. This is this is probably the show out of all ten of these that I watched. Um, you know, first? first, yeah, like yep. the longest amount of time has elapsed since that point. Uh huh. Uh-huh. And I just I've just forgotten a lot about it. I mean, I re- I remember some strange stuff about it, like when they're all at the, um, what's what's the name of that? That sort of food where you put all the ingredients down. Your table is a hot plate. Is it like, o, 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 o yak, oyaku? I don't know what it's called. Yeah, otomaki or something. Yeah, yeah. I I know what you mean, but yeah, uh, I'm embarrassed that I don't remember what it's called because I've, you know, I have never tried that before. No, so. neither have I. I've said it a bunch of times. Okonomiyaki. Okonomi. Is that right? Is that it? I think that's it. Okonomiyaki. Yes, looks like it. Um, I remember the scene where one of the characters makes like a really elaborate okonomiyaki, yeah. um, and it's uh-huh. like a tropical paradise thing yeah. that they make out of those ingredients. And I remember, um, some man, I don't know. I don't <laughs> care. <laughs> I really, I don't know. I think the show is fine. Yeah. Um, the characters are fine. The yeah. the action was fine. I all right. I I actually like it. Like the uh, uh, they 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 live in like they said the what, but it's more like a uh, a district, a, a a small city, the small island. I think that yeah. uh that a bit like Hong Kong. So they are you know like independent, and now they are still you know like a part of Japan. And uh, there was, I, I think there was uh, other things going on as well. Politics uh, or something that that go, going on in, in that. that uh, well, the, the green haired guy's dad is the mayor or something yeah. along those lines. And uh, and so there's going to be a political angle to the show. The yeah. the construction of this, this train, this fancy new train uh, was rushed in order to get it ready for some speech of his. Yeah. Um, and as a result, they weren't able to stop it in time, uh, which created yes, the, the trolley dilemma, like the famous trolley dilemma where yeah. you can flip the switch and save one person, but it kills a, bil- a bunch of other people or vice versa. Yeah. Um, that's what, that, that's what creates that dilemma for the plot in the second half of this double length episode. I, um, I would so that's say kind that... of political in that they, yeah. I don't know, they pushed it through just so they it could benefit a politician, um, without it being actually safe for people. So it's the, the elevation of the few at the expense of the many. Yep. But in general, I thought a lot of the political stuff and a lot of the stuff having to do with the green-haired guy's character was kind of like uh, limp. Yep. Not, re- so not really far, that yep. attention-grabbing. Yep. I would much rather see the blue guy jump over some shit and like run super fast, faster than a train. <laughs> you know? Yeah. Well, they, they they get superpower as well, so it's interesting to see, uh, yeah, what's what's going on, like, or 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 are they become like a uh, superheroes in the future? Uh, yeah, I think that's probably what the deal is going to be. Like, they're going to get more and more precognitive visions. They're going to see more disasters that could happen in the future, and they're going to try to, yeah, prevent those but, from happening. And along the way, they're going to learn the truth about their abilities and about the corruption and the darkness of the city. Interesting. Um, I I think the angle that uh, the show go for is choose your future. So that uh, basically like they have like a bunch of scenarios where you know like they have to pick the best option out of it. So I would say that uh, because that that was what happened to the three of them. You know, like in the flashback where you know like, they don't they don't agree uh, on each other. So I think that will uh, eventually happen later on, where there will there is some dilemmas that uh, they they have to pick, and they they fighting over that. Um, yeah, well, there's clearly going to be conflict between the three guys because they all have different. Um, they've Ends. all got different styles and yeah. philosophies, and there's the there's the argument they have at the very end of the episode while they're at the grave of the girl who died in the fire. Um, like the red and green haired guys get into some big argument over, I can't even remember at this point what oh, they fight about. 
yeah they they fight about uh, the the blue hair guy just uh still i see that um you know like the voice she's still alive from, she's still alive right from her, so she's still alive right and he's and, like no my sister is dead i've moved on yeah and then the red haired guy's Snap like, out. I don't care. I'm just uh, drinking energy drinks and hacking the mainframe. <laughs> he's yeah. the hacker character. That's his whole persona. Alrighty. So you put, I would, I would guess that you put it third out of 10. I did. I did indeed. I, yep. I put it four. Okay. Uh, all right. The last one, a tribe, na- tribe nine. Tribe Nine Extreme Baseball. Yep, out of the ten, so I I don't really care about this one the most, the least. I care about this one the least because it start with the, the the whole bully plot that you know like we don't really care about at first. They have another character named Tiger here. Actually, I remember there was a character named Tiger before. Out of the ten that we just said. Oh. I didn't write down too many characters' names this time around. I wasn't like really yeah. into a lot of a lot of the shows, so Yeah, because Taiga is like represent Tiger. So Taiga is the uh yellow hair guy in um uh, in Sasaki uh Tomiano. Oh, the yellow haired guy who Yeah, okay. Yep. All, All right. right. So this one is yeah, I I don't really care about all the baseball stuff. Here, I I don't see the point. Oh, all right, you go ahead. <laughs> uh, this show's not very good. I thought it was gonna be like dumb fun, but it's just dumb. Yep. it's not fun. <laughs> uh, the music sucks. Some of the, yep. it's, it's really bad. Like Koroshi I also had really bad music. Um, yep. It was trying to it was trying to be like really smooth and and have kind of like spy music, but it just was not that. Uh, Tribe Nine's even worse because the music never stops. There is always music playing during this mm-hmm. show, and it's always like really weird electronic influenced rock music that sounds like it doesn't even sound like it's from a particular era. It just sounds like it never should have been born into the world, musically speaking. Mm-hmm. Uh, it's bad, and it drowns out the dialogue some of the time. But I mean, the dialogue is is so lame that that's probably preferable to being able to hear what the characters are saying because they're just talking about you know there's two audience surrogate characters uh there's the one guy who's like really afraid and he's kind of getting beat up and then there's the other guy who's the fisherman uh with the red hair who's like really enthusiastic about joining the the baseball team so he's got lots of self-confidence and the other guy doesn't have a lot of self-confidence and wowie wow would you look at that there's two characters who are on opposing sides of a particular uh, sliding scale of personality of a given personality trait like oh this this guy is not this way and this guy is very much this way yep. amazing um, that sucks uh, the the baseball is like this show would have needed to be really really well produced um, in order to hook me yep. but it really it really wasn't like a lot of the defensive stuff after the the team on defense had caught the ball they actually have to go and like the per, the base runner is not out at that point they have to go and like beat them up or kill them or something mm-hmm. but yep. not a lot of the shots where there was conflict between a base runner and um and a defensive player were really that interesting i mean i think there was one where a guy slid through another guy's legs or something that yep. was pretty cool but in general it was just like i don't know characters trying to punch or hit someone and missing and falling over yeah, <laughs> like bad all around. Tribe nine, more like tribe zero out of ten. <laughs> that that's a bit harsh, but yeah. Well, <laughs> well, I I I yeah, I don't really care about about all this. You know, like I I feel that uh, the character design, like some of them are as as alright, like they they are dis- distinct from each other. The yeah, like character- a fat guy. Yep, that one. Yeah. Uh, the <laughs> characters are their personality are hit and miss so far. Like the the guy who li- literally say that I'm boring, you know. When you're talking about me, I'm boring. I don't have anything. So why why we care about these type of characters? Or well, why would we care about a show 
that writes the line of dialogue for a character, I am boring. Yeah, in acknowledgement of the fact that it has written a boring character. Gee, so, yep, I, I put that 10 out of 10. I don't care about the way. 10 out of 10? You loved yep. it. Masterpiece <laughs> status. Masterpiece. <laughs> yeah, I, I also put it 8th. Yep. Close to the bottom. It was bad. Yeah, but uh, we, we, we still also have like the, uh, like you said, the Riot Club and uh, Opito Children who are hopefully will be will turn out to be much better like i have high hope for these two as well i don't have high hopes for anything anymore <laughs> i'm like guardian enzo <laughs> anime is just full of shows that are just bad on their face and the ones that i like are the good ones yeah, yeah. any show with a lot of girls enough. in it trash pandering any show by studio shaft ugly hideous pandering <laughs> Uh, pretend, pretentious. Any any show that uh, Kyoto Anime, Kyoto Animation, uh, Kyoto oh Animation. yeah, Kyoto Animation, yes, bad, moe, gross, <laughs> pretentious, moe blob, gross, <laughs> ew. I am an elite anime viewer, and I don't like Kyoto Animation. Thank you very much. <laughs> Which studio? Oh, I don't know. I don't know anything about what studio. Like how yeah. an elite anime connoisseur would feel about their work. Right. I don't know. Yeah. I don't know anything. I am just so disappointed, basically, that I'm out of it. I don't have any strong opinions. The only strong opinions I have about any of these shows are how bad some of them are. Yeah. Um, not a great way to start the year. Yeah. But thankfully, we're changing gears on the podcast this year. We're hardly going to be talking about anime at all. We've got our other channel, Triple Cross Cinema, going to be talking about classic films with real people in them. You should check so, it out. Don't worry about anime. It's uh, clearly can't recover from this season. Yep. So next postcard, we we still uh, in our adventure to the uh, uh, to the Asian countries. So next one, well, we're gonna talk about three shows. I uh, sorry, three movies from from Chinese speaking countries yes. in two thousand. What so is it? That, Yi Yi. Yi Yi. Um, from Taiwan, uh, Crunching Tiger, Hidden Dragon from China, and, and in the mood for love. Yep, from Hong Kong. Right. Yeah, it's gonna be good stuff, and we'll talk about touch periodically as well. Yeah, I don't know if I'll right. post those every single week or if I'll like, we'll, I'll wait and we'll get like a bunch of thirty-minute segments, combine them, post them all at once. Uh, we'll figure it out. Yep, we figured that out. But yeah. for now. Enjoy the new seasons, man. <laughs> man, this has been one of the saddest episodes ever. It's just so little. There are so little like bright spots. There's so few bright spots. There's so few positives. Yeah. Yep. But yeah. Just, it's just, watch older, one, just watch old anime, man. Yeah. Just one of these days, but wait, wait for spring. Spring, spring will save us, right? Yeah. Always. Yes, that's right. All right. Spring always. It does always save us. That's when. Everything comes back to life. Hopefully anime will too. All right. Uh, we'll see you back in, in two week times for movies. All right. See you then. Bye-bye.